excuse me? Why are you wire brushing a log? Because we're going to grow mushrooms in this log today. It's something I've been wanting to do for a real long time. Today, I'm going to show you how to grow mushrooms in your backyard. On a log. Here we go. Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. What are you really doing? All right, let me show you what I got, all right? What's that? This is mushroom spore that's been cultivated, inoculated. These are wooden dowels that have been inoculated with oyster mushroom spore. And I went out into the woods. Our neighbor just felled a bunch of trees. They did some logging. So then I brought back those logs and we're going to inoculate the logs with the dowels of mushroom mycelium. I think that's what this is. I'll put it down here what it is. They look like grubs. Um, yeah, a little, it looks a little bit like worms with white stuff on it, but it's actually wooden dowels like the kind for furniture making. So let's go, all right? Does it matter what kind of log it is? Yeah, you want it to be, um, depending on what kind of mushroom you want to grow, you, uh, in the instructions that come with the mushroom spore, that'll tell you what kind of logs they grow on. I'll link below uh, in the video information about where I bought this stuff, and they have a great instruction book that comes along with it. But what I'm doing right now is I'm prepping the logs. Uh, you're going to be removing lichen, which is uh, this stuff here, which, you know, you can, the mushrooms can cohabitate with lichen, but just lightly brush it off. You don't want to break the bark, you just want to clean the lichen off the bark. Because it competes with the spore? So the lichens cohabitate with the spore, mushroom spore, but the instructions all say it's better to, if you can get it off, just take it off. What kind of mushrooms did you get? Uh, after reading up on these, we actually will hunt or forage for oysters in our woods, and we really like them. There are a couple of videos about mushroom foraging. I'll link to those at the end of the show here. But this is a pearl oyster mushroom. This is a blue oyster. And then this is a shiitake, which will take longer. This could take up to a year or two. These grow fairly fast. The shiitake take a little longer. Hmm. Um, and you know, Eric's just kind of a big experiment. So we're going to er put this wait, in. Wait, wait, Eric is kind of a big experiment? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. That'd be my experiment. <laughs> All right, let's get going. So to get these into your log, you have to use a drill bit. This is a 5 16 and I have it marked with some tape here, an inch and a quarter in, so I know when I'm drilling, when the tape hits the log, I should pull back out because that's an inch and a quarter in. And then we're going to pop these in and then seal them with beeswax. So let me show you. So ideally, it's a little less than four inches um, you're spacing these. And Garden Fork is all about done is better than perfect. So do the best you can. From what I've read, um, you should be able to put about 50 holes in a three to four foot log. I don't know if that's true. We're going to find that out. But I'm just going to drill away here and uh, make mushrooms. It looks like a very precise woodpecker was here. Yeah. What's that? This is actually a beat up old rice cooker that I turned into a beeswax melter. I mean, we have honeybees, so uh, I have my own beeswax. But if you have a kind of broken uh, or beat up rice cooker, this makes a really good wax melter or a little hot plate. You got to be careful not to burn your wax. You can also get a soy based food grade wax to seal this. All right, so we take some of our wax. Smells good. And we're going to seal the ends of our logs because we want to keep other organisms from entering the logs and we also want to keep moisture in the log. So we just apply beeswax to the end of the log. Hmm. If you have any bruising on the bark, you want to seal that as well. Are you going to put one kind of mushroom 
per log or different mix them up. Yeah, you don't want to mix your uh, you don't want to mix your fungi fungi um, because they can uh, they can work across purposes to each other. So each log should have its own variety of mushroom, and those mushrooms should be kept separated as well. What's it smell like? It smells kind of mushroomy. Is there a right side up and a right side down? No, these are just going to go right in. Here we go. So those go in. That looks a little tight, but that's okay. Rubber mallet. Just like that. These are a little tight, but that's okay. Pretty cool, huh? Rubber mallet, spory things, some wood. Make mushrooms. All right, now we're gonna seal the dowels with the beeswax. Doesn't have to be a lot. That's about it. So just repeat that for as many dowels as you have and as many logs and holes you have. 500 times. Yeah. We have 300 dowels, so we're gonna drill 300 holes and wax them. Again, you can also use the soy-based food grade wax if you don't have beeswax, but you can, also, you can buy beeswax in the craft stores. So you don't have to use just oak. Uh, depending on which mushroom you wanna grow, you can do birch. This is some birch that I got from the same area where they were cutting down trees. And if you're using your chainsaw, do a fresh cut. You know, if this is just laying around, cut off the end that's all dried out and give it a fresh clean cut and then we'll wax the end of this. But this is a birch, uh, different oaks work, alder works. It's kind of interesting the different woods you can use. Pines usually don't work very well for most mushrooms that you want to grow. But again, I'll link to the website that I have a bunch of references from uh, in the video notes below, all right? Once these are in and sealed, how long will it take before we actually get mushrooms? Well, you know, I like immediate satisfaction, so that's why I got the pearl oysters. It actually can take months to years, depending on what variety you picked. Um, and the weather, I bet. And the weather. The ideal here is you want um, consistent moisture. We're gonna store these in a kind of a dark part, a shady part of the woods. Uh, that's a little damp. You can also keep it in, um, a corner of your garage or something covered with like burlap. Don't cover it with plastic. But we're gonna put these on pallets and then um, put them back behind the woodshed. It's kind of a shady area back there. This is kind of a how to get started video and then we will follow up with uh, some of our results when we uh, know what our results are. Should this it... is very, very exciting video, isn't it? <laughs> Do you need to like water it or anything? Yeah, you actually do. You, um, if you don't have consistent rainfall, you need, you need to water your logs. <laughs> what's the wall? What's the log telling me? Ouch! I've been just binge watching Twin Peaks, so. This is my partially shaded wooded moist area, which is right near the house, close to the hose, so I can just run in here with a bucket and water them if I have to. So here's our inoculated and waxed log. The ends are coated. I'm gonna just lay it right here. Oh, between the slats? Yeah, so that way, I don't, it's not gonna roll away. I mean, gravity is not too strong here. So <laughs> we're gonna do a follow up video about how this thing this is it called bloom? The mushroom blooms or flushes or it fruits. And we'll see, all right? There's more information about me here. I put where I got the spores and stuff in the text below the video, all right? Make it a great day. I'll see you later. Happy mushrooming.